hearty mixed green salad can make a filling meal on those hot summer days when you don't feel like turning on the oven. On this episode of Eat Wyoming, Diane Sines and Kent Willis show us their favorite approach to mixed green salad. Many of the ingredients for this salad can be grown locally, on farms or in backyard gardens. Got some greens to eat. Yeah, we've got some great, uh, great lettuce here, uh, some colorful chard, uh, kale, a couple little beet greens hiding nice. in Nice. They're starting to pop up, right? So how about we make a salad with them? Yeah, that'd be great. So starting off with some lettuce. Brad gave us some great stuff in the CSA. So all sorts of varieties are coming out now. So what I love about all these colorful greens yeah. is, is that color's a great indicator of the phytochemical content of these foods. And the vitamins, right? And the vitamins, you bet. You can get all of those, all of those great phyto, phytochemicals from, from all different kinds of plant foods, whether it be the grapes from wine, the leafy greens we've got here, uh, the carrots are going to have some great things in them that's uh, going to help protect our eyesight, uh, immune system function, and even keep our brains working as we age. So take home message Not is... Not that you are aging. Oh, thank you, buddy. <laughs> take home message is the more color, the more protection. Oh, you bet. So in terms of a good salad, moving on from health. Health is important. Yeah. But we yeah. got to eat this stuff. Am I, because kale is so wonderful, am I going to want to just go crazy with the kale and throw it all in there? You know what, maybe I am, but maybe you're not. But, but we wanna, if we wanna get a little more, um, a little more boost from this salad to, to last us a little bit longer, we're gonna wanna get maybe a little bit of fat and a little bit of protein in there as well. So and, you're, you're trying to tell me that man don't live on fiber alone. <laughs> no, no we don't. So maybe we could get some, uh, some nuts in there. All right, toss them in. We got some Brazil nuts. Brazil nuts and cashews, I and think. And cashews, yeah. And so this is gonna add a real nice texture uh, in addition to helping, helping, uh, helping this salad take us a little bit longer into our afternoon. I'm going out on a limb here and throwing in some raisins. Hey, Would that be good? Go for it. Diane and Kent have shown us how to make a great salad that's both tasty and nutritious. But have you ever wondered where all this produce comes from? Some of our produce is available locally from Community Supported Agriculture Operations, or CSAs. Donna Quinn visits a CSA in Dayton to find out how these veggies and greens are grown. Brad Holiday is here at the uh, CSA in Dayton. What's the name of your CSA? Holiday Family Farms. That makes, makes sense. So you're growing greens this winter and selling them through your CSA. Would you explain to our viewers what uh, a CSA is? Uh, CSA stands for Community Supported Ag um, Agriculture. And basically, you buy a share of our farm, in a sense. Doesn't entitle you to any profits, because we don't get profits. But um, whatever is ready that week, you get a share of that harvest. And so if it's lettuce, spinach, kale, chard, that's what we deliver that week to the different shareholders. So tell us about some of the different greens that you've grown this winter. Um, we have in front of us here beds of kale. We have the older kale that's about done and we have new kale coming on. Um, it's a Toscano variety is what they call it is Toscano. Um, spinach, we have two different varieties of spinach growing here. We have the bib lettuce or the butter leaf lettuce. We have um, kind of a sweet crisp lettuce over there. We had radishes. We have Swiss chard, we have beet tops and eventually beets. We have broccoli heads starting to form over there. The cauliflower is still growing and then carrots in the back there. Okay, so you've done a few root crops and then some of the uh, leafy vegetables. Which one seems to be the most popular? Um, the, the leafy vegetables, just okay. because for one thing, that's they're more regular. Um, right. The root okay. crops take a lot longer. Okay, so you're getting those nearer the end of the season rather than throughout the whole season. Right, yep. Okay. Well, those sound like a great variety of, of choices. There are CSAs available in many of our communities across the um, state and some of them in our adjoining state. So they might be something for you to look into in joining and participating in a CSA um, and finding out a little bit more about what crops grow in your neighborhood. 
But let's go back to the kitchen and see what else they've come up with um, to add and enhance the salads from the greens that we've got here from Brett. This is a pretty good salad, That yeah? looks fantastic. But it needs something. It needs something, yes. Oh, don't do that, don't <laughs> do that. What do you mean? We can, we can make an amazing dressing from just a few ingredients here in our kitchen. You don't say. I do say. Okay. <laughs> For a fresh, simple dressing, you'll need three tablespoons of olive oil, a tablespoon of lemon juice, a dollop of honey or mustard, salt and pepper to taste, and a little lemon zest for texture. Simply combine the ingredients in a small bowl and whisk, or even easier, combine in a small jar and shake vigorously. The dressing should last in the fridge for about a week. Remember, for the salad itself, we started with lettuce, chard, kale, beet greens, and spinach. Then added carrots, radishes, raisins, nuts, and sun-dried tomatoes. Be sure to experiment with vegetables, fruits, and protein that you enjoy. The salad combinations are endless.